Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite cauliflower gardener, the Linux gamer. Yeah, I just got a haircut though, so it's less of a cauliflower. This video is brought to you as always by my 122 amazing and gracious and awesome patrons, without whom this show would not be possible. I want to give a special shout out to Corbinian Childman, uh, one of my top tier singularity members, without whom, man, I just don't know what I'd do. Thank you for your support, it's truly humbling. If you enjoy this video, and you watch it all the way through, you can hit that like button. It really helps the show out. If you don't like this video, if you're like, dude, you literally just did a Librem 5 video two weeks ago, tell me about it. Hit that dislike button. Let me know what you think. You can also help the show out by heading over to LBRY. That's beta.lbry.tv slash at the Linux gamer. And uh, it's a good time over there. Decentralized, open source, really cool stuff. It is 92 degrees in my apartment, and I brought with me a paper towel for which to dab my face because in the last couple of videos, I've been very sweaty. It is 92 degrees in here. What is that in Celsius? 33.3 degrees in my apartment Celsius. You know, I have an air conditioner. It's over there. I can't have it on when, uh, when I've, you know, when I'm working on a video or when I'm recording one anyway. And so, you know, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six lights that are creating all kinds of uh, heat and combustion, uh, not combustion, but you know, heat and all the stuff. So it's, it's very hot in here. Suffice it to say, if I'm a little sweaty, just let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll be sure to, you know, wipe it, wipe it off because, you know, prop comedy. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start the video now. <laughs> so the Librem 5 specs have been released and I was gonna jump on this immediately, but I had a bunch of stuff going in the pipeline and you know what? I wanted to see what other people had to say. And to my surprise, I was kind of shocked by some of the, uh, some of the naysayers out there. You know who you are, <laughs> check it out. So I'm going to play the role of apologist right now and I'm going to talk about the Librem 5 and why I think that all the problems that everybody says that are with this device are just completely wrong. To answer the title of this video, no, the Librem 5 specs are not a disappointment. I am super stoked for this thing now more than ever. So first off, we're gonna talk about the Librem 5. If you're not familiar with it, I don't know how you're not familiar with it already, but if you're not, check it out. So originally Purism, uh, the company behind this, uh, announced the Librem 5 as a Kickstarter campaign. This was back in 2000. 2017. It was billed as a privacy focused, security minded, and Linux powered smartphone, which, you know, is kind of a big deal. We don't have anything like that in the market right now. And the phone actually has physical hardware switches that you can turn off the, uh, the Wi Fi, the Bluetooth, the baseband, all these things that are, you know, controlled in software in most other smartphones. So, the company behind this called Purism, they're actually known for making Linux laptops that have similar uh, physical hardware switches that disable cameras and microphones and all that such. It's actually a really awesome thing and they reached their goal. Uh, and so this device has been in development since 2017. So let's talk about the specs of this device because this is something that I've been waiting for for, I mean, since the day I heard about this project. I donated the first day I heard about this because you know I'm an idealist and I believe in, in the cause here. So the, the display is actually a, an IPS TFT panel, 720 by 1440 resolution, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute, all right? Uh, the processor is the IMX8M. It's quad core with a max speed of 1.5 gigahertz. Uh, the GPU that's built into it is actually, it supports OpenGL uh, 3.0, Vulkan, and OpenCL2. The RAM uh, comes to a total of three gigabytes with internal storage maxing out at 32 gigabytes. And it's expandable with a micro SD card up to two terabytes. The Wi-Fi supports A, B, G, and N uh, in the 2.4 and the uh, five gigahertz spectrum. It also has Bluetooth four. So this thing has a user replaceable 3,500 milliamp hour battery. It has a 13 megapixel camera on the front with an LED flash and it has a selfie camera of eight megapixels. And the USB type C port supports USB 3.0 as well as power delivery and video output. So this video is called, are the Librem 5 specs a disappointment? The answer to that question is an unequivocal no and I'm gonna go into why. So one of the things that I find so awesome about this device is that it's user serviceable. They treat you like you're an adult, right? You can actually put on your big boy pull-ups and change the battery yourself. It's so revolutionary, this concept. 
now obviously i'm being a little facetious there i have very little respect for companies that build the battery in and make it very difficult if not impossible to change on your own uh or normal for normal people to do it anyway and uh, you know the but the fact is that that's not the only piece of this device that's modular right the the baseband is also completely replaceable uh you can pull it out replace it with a with a different uh baseband uh, controller if you want that's freaking cool it exists on the uh, on an m.2 bus and so you're able to just pull this chip out and put in a different one and it just it's it's awesome i mean there aren't other phones on the market that let you do that there aren't as far as i know you also have the kill switches on here which let you kill the the wi-fi and the uh the bluetooth you can you have another switch that lets you kill uh, all of the radio functionality for you know the the carrier and you can also kill the camera and the microphone or the cameras and the microphone there are m multiple cameras on this um when you turn all three off you're able you're disabling the gps the compass the motion detector the uh the light and proximity sensors um that's really awesome that's not even something i had thought about until i read their blog post where you know there are clever hacks that let people you know bad actors read and estimate your your location based on only the motion sensor in your phone and that's it and that's all they need and they can still track you because these are super high precision uh uh, gyroscopes. So the fact is, you know, if you are security minded, if you are worried about your privacy, this is the phone for you. So let's talk about the CPU. I've heard some people complain that it's nothing special, right? Um, I don't think I, I don't think I agree with that statement. Um, we'll get into why in a second, but let's talk about like what the actual specifications are. So the specs are that the uh, the processor runs at 1.5 gigahertz as, as a max, and uh, it supports Vulkan and OpenGL uh, 3.1. Uh, it also has, um, according to the manufacturer's website, it's capable of 4K Ultra HD resolutions because remember, this is like kind of a system on a chip where you have your graphics card and your audio and, uh, and your CPU all in one. Um, it, so it's capable of 4K Ultra HD resolutions. It's capable of 4K 60 video playback. So it also has 20 audio channels available. It's also capable of fanless operation with low thermal cost and, and a long battery life, according to the manufacturer's website. And like I said, people have, have claimed that this CPU is nothing special. But here's the thing. We're not talking about Android here. Android is to PC as the Librem 5 is to console. And some people are going to be like, what the f are you talking about, dude? Like, yeah, uh, PC gaming master race. Get out of here with that nonsense. The fact that the hardware and the OS are a stable target means that anyone with half a mind to write a program can target that device specifically, and they can optimize for that device, okay? To draw a terrible comparison, the Xbox 360 only had 512 megabytes of RAM, and yet it was totally capable of playing uh, Grand Theft Auto V on it, which was like one of the biggest games of the, of the generation. And, uh, you know, compromises were made, obviously, but the thing is, this is more like uh, iOS than it is Android. On Android, you have multiple CPU architectures. You have m varying uh, specifications that are available. Uh, you have high-end phones. You have low-end phones. So when developers are targeting Android, they have to write this... Uh, they have to target this nebulous idea of a phone. Is it going to run on the high end? Is it going to run on the low end? Uh, I have to target all these different screen sizes and aspect ratios and blah, blah, blah. On iOS, it's different. You have a select number of devices with screen aspect ratios that are known and CPU specs and RAM uh, and RAM availability. You have all of these things that are predetermined for you and you get to de write your code for those devices. On Android, you know, you're using a virtual machine and you're kind of just throwing stuff at the wall until it sticks. <laughs> so this is a different device completely. So some people have made similar arguments about the RAM. It's three gigabytes, right? But I, I again, I think that there is enough opportunity here as uh, the, the Librem 5 is its own platform, its own thing that, you know, developers are going to be taking advantage of this hardware. There are 32 gigabytes of internal storage. Uh, to me, that's plenty, but it's also expandable with a micro SD card. So uh, up to two terabytes. So I just don't see that being an issue at all. Plus I don't take many photos anyway. And when I do, they automatically back up to my next cloud and they get removed from my phone. So I don't really care about storing photos on my phone per se. But now we're going to talk about the most controversial <laughs> aspect of the specs, the finalized specs. The, the main issue that I've seen people 
levy against these specifications is that the 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 screen resolution is 1440 by 720 or 720 by 1440 in, in portrait mode here's why i don't think that's an issue whatsoever the the panel is tft ips it's you know that's great but personally i think that the idea of having a five inch 4k or even a 2k display on a phone is such a waste both in terms of performance and in terms of like just the physical resources of having a 4k densely packed screen like that it just doesn't make sense to me it you know the more pixels you have on the screen the more your gpu has to work the worse your battery life is going to be so i think that the the purism's decision to go with a 1440 by 720 display makes perfect sense because it's all about battery life and you know there's another consumer grade mass market product that uses a 720p panel and uh do you know what it is it's the nintendo switch ladies and gentlemen the nintendo switch uses a a, a four a 720p screen and you know what i have absolutely no issue with this device's screen whatsoever none it looks perfectly okay at this size and we're gonna bust out the calipers real fast because I'm prepared for this video. And we're gonna, we're gonna open this up to 5.7 inches because 5.7 inches, uh, fun fact, is the size of the screen of the Librem 5. And if you look, guess what? That's gonna be the size of the Librem 5 phone. And it's just gonna be more densely packed than it is on the, on the uh, Nintendo Switch. So I have absolutely no issue with 1440. Uh, by 720 screen resolution. I think that it's a great choice on, on the part of the developers. Um, and, you know, if you're if you're worried about not having enough space on the screen to display things, my dudes, this is not like, you're, you're not going to run out of screen real estate like you would on a 720p screen or on a desktop. That's not going to happen because this is designed, this is, this is GNOME that's been tailored specifically for this screen. These, they know what they're doing. I have no doubt in my mind that this is going to be a, a perfectly uh, serviceable screen size. I think that it's going to be fine. I, I'm not going to have any issue with it. I don't think anyone else will either. And you can also plug in, uh, you know, an external monitor uh, via the uh, USB port. And if you want more screen real estate, probably not the most mobile option, but you know. <laughs> So the other thing that's really exciting about this device is the battery. Um, the, ba the phone has a 3,500 milliamp hour battery. That's pretty big. Uh, the, the Google Pixel 2 has a 2,700 milliamp hour battery, and it has a, a pretty decent, uh, for an Android phone, battery life. Uh, it lasts, you know, my phone lasts me about um, ha most of the day. I have to charge it every single night. Um, but I think that because of the way the, the, the smart decisions that purism have made, I think that this could potentially be a, you know, a every other day charge on the Librem five. I, I can't speak to that. I can't say that that's going to certainly be the case, but I, I, th I have my suspicions that this is not going to be a device that needs to be charged every single day. And, you know, I suspect as the OS matures and as app developers, you know, create more uh, specialized, more optimized software, I think that, th that we're going to see incredibly awesome battery life with this device. And that's another one of the things that I'm super stoked about. Anyway, guys, I don't know what else to say about this device, except that I am so beyond excited about this thing. Now more than ever, now that we have the final specifications and we know what's going to be in this thing in terms of hardware, I'm really stoked. I can't wait. It's going to be it's going to be right here in my hands pretty soon. I'm really, really happy about that. All right, I'm going to stop nerding out now. You guys, uh, let me know what you think of the specs for the Libra 5 down in the comments. I can't wait to hear from you. We're also going to have a thread over on the forums about the Libra 5 specs. If we don't already, I, I think we might actually. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for this video. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon or on LibrePay, which is the free and open source alternative. You can also pick up a t-shirt. There's a link in the description. But no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me the Linux Gamer, and as always, thanks for watching.